aware of the bonds that were created today when you told me that sure there's a way Welcome folks, Max from Woodsman's Finest here. Welcome to another episode of my Grip to Tip series. This is the first in three parts talking about my favorite ILF risers. Today we're going to talk about a classic ILF riser with a pair of cutting edge limbs and why I love this combination so much. Welcome folks and thanks for tuning in. If you have been enjoying the series, Please consider liking and subscribing, it's helping me out a lot. Now today we're talking about the Titan Mark I from Tretec Lancaster Archery, which is a 17 inch riser paired with a cutting edge pair of limbs that I got for a really good deal, which is the Mach X by MK um, of Korea. Now I have been really contemplating about how to put together these next three videos because we're going to be talking about a 17 inch riser, a 19 and a 21 inch riser. And I've been swapping limbs back and forth between those three um, because all of them just work so well and um, I wasn't able to decide. But I took this bow and this configuration to Hungary hunting a couple times and I've been enjoying shooting it very much. So this is one of what we're going to be talking about today. Now as always, a little bit of a quick pre-story but not too long, don't worry about it. Um, I got this riser a while ago because I was really searching for um, a Tretec Titan. Now, the newer Titans just don't appeal to me as much with the broadhead um, breakthroughs, but I think, as far as I understand, they have exactly the same geometry, especially the 17 inch riser. So, if you like the other ones, which I totally would understand, um, really go, f like, go ahead and like right off the, off the bat, a little bit of a spoiler, it's a great riser. Now, um, this is a little bit of a break from the last couple of videos and the, most of my videos talking about wooden bows, um, custom bows. Um, and so this is kind of my black bow series. Black bow as a kind of an homage to the, you know, the term black rifle. Um, and what it means to me is um, ILF hunting and um, hybrid risers, if you will, hunting and target shooting that are extremely versatile and um, that you can set up with so many different limbs and you can tune everything about them and that's kind of the um the equivalent to like a black rifle where there's so much possibility of customization and tuning and switching things um and that's what i like so much about them because i love tinkering and i love changing stuff about my setup to make it really individual and this is sometimes as well i think what doesn't appeal as much to people when it comes to ILF risers and, and you know aluminum or carbon risers is that they feel like it's a very sterile kind of a you know kind of a dead kind of thing not like a wooden bowl with all of the different you know whatever like laminations um, you know accent stripes and all the other things you can do but in my opinion there's so many different ways how you can customize these and make them really your own now right off the bat I bought all of the um, components in here when there is a logo appearing um, of some company in the video, then it's usually that these people were so kind to sponsor something to the channel. There was no exchange of money, of course, but it's usually companies that I've been buying stuff in the past from and was like really, really happy about the product. And so I just approach them and ask, hey, do you want to ship something to me? You know, I'm going to put in the video because I really want to get the word out and I want to support your company because I think your stuff's dope. So if there is anything appearing in terms of logo in the video, then it's because this company was so kind to send this product to me. Now, um, that's about it. Um, what do we have here? Let's just go over it before we really run a grip to tip. This is a 62 inch bow, which means a 17 inch riser with long ILF limbs. Now, set at 49 pounds at my draw, 27 inches. Um, the brace height is about at seven and a half. The tiller is even. That's very important right off the bat because it, it, when it comes to tuning, that is something that people ask a lot about. Um, other than that, I have an Eagle Flight Quiver on here. I always talk about Eagle Flight Quivers because in my opinion, they don't mess with the balance of my bow a lot. Even with a full quiver, the bow is really standing upright and vertical in my hand. And that's why I've been loving them. This is a four 
um, arrow quiver and I'm also ha having some five arrow quivers on my, my setups. But this is the only quiver that is so light that it hasn't been messing with my bow that I love shooting basically vertically with a very, very slight cant and that's exactly doing it for me. Um, other than that, I run a little weight up front um, and a little stabilizer up front that I just covered in camouflage tape um, to keep with the whole color scheme and for hunting of course as you can see this bow is really really subdued especially when it comes to the limbs that of course um, I left Olympic archery limbs and they're pretty bright white on the front and I can't use that for hunting so that is pretty much the setup and now without further ado grip to tip Sorry folks for the changing lighting conditions, there's just like a cloud bank coming through. Uh, let's just talk grip to tip on this bow with a little bit of b-roll here. Now, right off the bat, as you can see, what I'm running is an R-Core grip. Um, I've been running them on all of my different ILF risers because I found out what exactly I really want for every riser um, in terms of grip angle, in, grip, in terms of design of the grip the size for my, my hands, you know, the lifeline, all of these kind of things. So this is a very basic riser because this riser, um, sorry, this is a basic grip um, because this riser has a lot of deflex. I chose a very low design. In general, I do that because I run a fixed crawl on my bows, which means that I run a completely dead even tiller and I find that placing um, the pressure point of my hand a little bit lower on the grip actually gets me the best dead in hand most repeatable results and the bow is just jumping straight to target. Arco grip, just ran it, you know, with the olive um, green color, OD green, which is my favorite. Now, this riser has a lot of deflex. Deflex, of course, being from the different, uh, from the two limb pockets, imaginary line, and then, you know, basically from there forward, you can imagine, let's just do that with, a, with an arrow shaft. You can see running it basically through the limb pockets you get about an inch and a half deflex which is a lot um, that of course as I always say the bow is not accurate you're accurate however this is definitely helping with um, the torque of the bow rather reducing or eliminating the torque of the bow um, you know a handle forward design as has been implemented in your Black Widows the Tempest I've been talking about this in a lot of videos the deflex this is one reason why in my opinion, this riser is so forgiven from, and helps me being accurate and helps me, you know, making my mistakes that I do as a human, you know, eliminate it as much as possible. Very basic shelf design, um, a little cutout up front here. And as you can see in the shelf, of course, it's extremely cut, not cut past center. I mean, these aluminum risers are cut, um, but you can see um, you get a lot of space in here to run every type of rest that you would choose. Of course, I always go for the nap center rest, in my opinion, the easiest to tune, the easiest to exchange um, the outer part. There is a little, um, you know, nipple in there that is um, square, so you can actually take the front part off, turn the, the bolt on the other side um, with a little set screw, basically quarter turns um, to get your center shot in and out, which is great for group tuning. tuning. It doesn't do anything to your spine, you know, as far as tuning goes. However, um, for group tuning, it's extremely important. Now, um, that's that. Running the nap, center rest with a flipper arm. There's also a rubber arm you can get. Up front, as I said before, a weight and a stabilizer that dampens it a little bit. Is it 100% necessary? No, but my bow is sitting 100% vertically in my hand um, and I really like that, so I'm running that. I just attached a little wrist sling, you know, just some paracord tubing, which I um, braided and it's just like mounted right under here under my weight very very simple you can do that in 10 minutes at home and it definitely helps especially in a hunting situation I run finger slings a lot as well as you have seen in the videos however in a hunting situation when I put the bow away um, and then you know game appears I don't want to be messing around with a finger sling so in this case I just run my hand right through the wrist sling and I love shooting with a finger sling or a wrist sling because it allows me really to let 
the bow go, just jump straight to target and I don't get this anxiety about letting the bow, you know, fly out of the tree or whatever and then I grip it in the last moment, you know, and torque my, my arrow in whatever direction. Now that's that. There's a little bit of dirt on here still. I mean, I bought this bow used, there was like Velcro all over the place and I never actually really um, minded cleaning it up. What I love about this riser, since it's the Mark 1, um, I don't know what happened after, why they changed the design. Maybe it's a little bit too similar to the DAS, 17 inches, 17 inches from back then. I don't know. However, there is two marks kind of all over the place, you know. When you're looking at the B-roll, what you're realizing is there's actually marks of the tooling um, and of the CNC everywhere. And I kind of like that. It just gives it this kind of steampunk, you know, very individual look. Now... There is, um, of course, there is some um, attachment points on the front and on the lower back, just beneath, um, beneath the grip, for the um, for weights or whatever you wanna wanna add. The ILF attachments are very basic. Um, it's a bolt with a little bit of a brass sleeve, um, and they're holding up perfectly well. I don't know how old this riser is. I bought it used, of course. Um, however, they have been held holding up very very well um, there is lateral limb adjustments of course and that's that now when it comes to the limbs I got a great deal on these these were like I think 700 700 800 bucks back then um, this is maybe a limb that's about maybe five six years old I don't really know but it's pretty cutting edge still and this is a foam bi-directional carbon limb it's bright white on the front that's why I put some one stringer limb skins on here um, and the back is black and you can actually see the beautiful carbon. Now, I'm running some limb savers on here, right on the fade out, um, basically of the ILF attachment here, and um, that has been helping super well. And then another thing that really helps a lot with all the dampening, as I always say, is this specific Eagle Flight quiver. I find that bows that have a little bit of vibration, when I put this very light quiver on, as I said, it doesn't even mess with the vertical bow. However, because it's a rubber system, it definitely dampens the bow significantly. Now other than that, what I really want to point out about these limbs is that they're very smooth. These are 42 pounds on a 17 inch, uh, on a 25 inch riser. However, on this one, of course, they're pulling about 48 pounds at my draw because of, you know, every inch that you go shorter in the riser, you're going up by one pound. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to these limbs is they have a little bit more reflex, definitely. And they also run very, very narrow compared to other limbs. So there isn't hardly any weight in these limbs, which makes them so efficient and pretty darn fast and really a joy to shoot. Now, when it comes to tuning, because these limbs are made for a 25 inch riser, when you go a lot shorter than that, um, of course, there is a little bit of more relaxed limb pad angles in these short risers because they were, people know that they sign these risers that they're going to be shot with limbs that are meant for 25 inch risers. So they're not necessarily meant to go on a short riser and then being pulled as far 20, 27, 28, 29 inches. So there's a little bit more um, relaxed limb pad angles. And so I'm also tuning them with about two and a half turns out, which gives the limb a little bit more room to expand. Also optically, I definitely love how this bow looks. Um, with the the handle forward design and the limbs coming pretty straight back and then a pretty good amount of reflex in these specific limbs makes for a super smooth, very fast and very, very quiet bow that throws these 11 grain per pound arrows um, that about 540 grains super perfectly well. My string setup is a JS custom string as always out of Australia. He makes, in my opinion, the most beautiful strings. He's running um, a monofilament center serving that has, I've never met, um, and actually managed to destroy one, and I've shot some of his strings for several years, tens of thousands of arrows literally out of them, and I've never managed to destroy center serving. They're really well um, sized for my x knocks on my axis arrows, and I find the, the monofilament to be really smooth on release. Um, I've never had a problem getting hung up or anything. Uh, in this case, it's a 652 Spectra, my favorite string material. Um, and I'm running a pair of cat whiskers that are exactly set at one quarter 
of the string length on each side and I found these strings to be just most enjoyable, um, very very quiet, quick and hold up for a very long time. Now in terms of arrows, I'm shooting axis style arrows out of this bow. These are 350 spine, full length, which is in this case 31 inches. I'm always shooting one stringer wraps, which have, the, in my opinion, the most interesting designs, um, where I can really be creative and individual with my arrows. And then I'm shooting wild fletching natural turkey feathers from Josh. I've been shooting them for years now, and I uh, worked with them quite extensively even on some pictures for a calendar, etc, etc. And these fletchings don't only look good, but they're also very weather repellent because of the natural oil content in the, um, in the feathers. Now, in terms of components, I have been shooting top head for the last 18 years, um, and I have no reason to change that. These have the insert, outsert setup, from Top Hat, which is a 60 grain stainless. And then I'm running the protective colors on the front and the back. And I shoot a 150 point on this specific arrow, which gives me 215 grains up front and a total arrow weight of about 540 grains. All right, folks, it's the next day. I just took you around the 3D course a little bit, um, fletched some new arrows up overnight with some one stringers and um, some bright fletching so you can follow the shots a little bit better. Uh, I hope this was fun for you. Uh, in conclusion, I want to do a little bit of a conclusion about the bow and especially about the application. In my opinion, this with its um, D flex and the overall shape in the 62 inch configuration. And also in a 60 inch configuration, I also run it with medium limbs. It's really a formidable hunting bow. This bow weighs about um, four and a half pounds as is. It's just over two kilos um, with all the arrows in the quiver, which means for me, it's not too heavy to bring it anywhere, even on mountain hunts. Um, and I'll trust this bow really to be pretty indestructible as well with the carbon and foam limbs. This is of course something that chain doesn't change a lot in performance when it comes to different temperature, um, different moisture, etc., etc. Um, and the aluminum, of course, is pretty indestructible. So this is a bow I would trust to bring anywhere. It's not so heavy, like I said, to bring it on a mountain hunt. Um, of course, not in a tree stand or something like that. But at the same time, it has a weight that is forgivable and forgiving, which means that it's not going to add too much to my pack or something. But at the same time, when I'm a little bit nervous and my pulse is up, um, this bow is going to be forgiving on my shakes a lot more. Um, so this is, in my opinion, a really great hunting setup. Also with the modern Titan, of, Titan, of course, the Mark II. Um, this is the Mark I, as I said before. Um, and that's the reason why I like it so much, because there is so many different things I can do with this one. I've also run it with XL Longbow ILF, ILF limbs, which is, of course, going to make it a 64-inch bow which has also been working really, really great. So this is why this is um, the first one in my three-part series about my favorite hunting risers, ILF aluminum risers um, in the um, Black Bow series, if you will. Um, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope there was a lot of shots in here that were enjoyable for you to watch. Um, and I hope that you're gonna tune in next time. 
If you are interested in whatever else is going on with me, you're going to find me on Instagram, Facebook, um, and of course, a lot of different YouTube videos. Browse them if you want. Um, that would be great and help the channel a lot. Again, like and subscribe to make this um, a lot easier for me to get the word out. And um, yeah, thanks to all the sponsors and thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you very soon. Cheers.